Hi everyone, my name is Carlin. Welcome to yoga. We have two optional props for today's class. So some sort of strap, and if you don't have a strap, you can just use a belt or a towel, and then also an optional block. And if you don't have a block, you can just use something that's similar in shape, um, maybe a small stack of books. If not, I'll, op I'll offer an option without the block later in class. Whenever you're ready, we're gonna get started lying on our backs. And as you settle onto your back here, make sure you have your strap nearby. And tuck your shoulders in slightly. Relax the back body. And maybe bring your left hand to your belly and your right hand to your heart. We're just going to take five cleansing breaths here. Deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, side out. Again, inhale through the nose. Exhale, side out. Number three, big breath in. Long, slow breath out. Two more, just like that. Last one. Take a moment to notice here. Notice if the breath has slowed down. Maybe the body starts to sink a little bit deeper into the mat. And find a little bit of movement with the fingers and the toes, rolling out the wrists and the ankles. And when you're ready, grab onto your strap and take both soles of the feet into the strap and extend both feet up to the sky, flexing the toes towards the face and pulling on each end of the strap, stretching out the hamstrings. Maybe you start to move your feet a little bit closer to the face. Deep breaths into the backs of the legs. And then just bend the left knee and let the left leg come out long, just reaching the right leg up towards the sky, flexing the toes and pulling them towards the face. If this feels quite intense today, you can always plant the sole of the left foot on the ground. Wherever you are, breathe deeply for the next two breaths. Beautiful. Take both ends of the strap into your right hand. Place your left palm on your left thigh. Just make sure that left hip stays glued to the ground. Pull the right toes a little bit closer to the face and then let that right leg just come out towards the right side. Don't worry about how far it goes. Keep that left hip glued to the ground. If it starts to come up, bring the leg up a little bit more. You know you've gone too far. Breath in the inner thigh for two. For one. And then gently come back to center and switch out the feet. Put the left foot in the strap and let the right leg just come out long. Again, if that's intense, you can always bend to the leg, planting the sole of the right foot on the ground. Find the length in the back of the left. <clears throat> Whoa. Find the length in the back of the left leg. Maybe you pull that foot a little bit closer to the face. And 
then take both ends of the strap into the left hand. Place the right hand on the right thigh, really glue that right hip down, and just let the left foot fall gently off to the left side. It's early in the practice, so you might not feel as open as you typically do, especially if it's early in the morning for you. Just take two breaths here. Beautiful, and then make your way back to center. Take both feet into the strap once more, stretching out both of the legs at the same time. Flex the toes towards the face, Lift the heels up towards the sky. And then keep the legs where they are. Just go ahead and release the strap off to the side. You can plant your palms at your sides, really pressing them down into the mat. And pull your belly button in and up, starting to activate the core. And we'll slowly start to lower the heels. Feeling that heat, those shakes, building in your core, and then find that sweet spot. So you might come to a place where your low back really starts to arch and come off the mat. If that happens, you know you've gone too far. Lift up the feet a little bit higher. And once you find that sweet spot, you'll really feel some shaking in the core. Maybe you lift the arms up and over the head. Maybe you lift the head slightly. And we'll hold in this Hollow body shape for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, on 1. Let everything go. Full body stretch. When you're ready, hug the knees into the chest. Take some rock side to side, massage out the low back. And eventually you'll take your rocks up and down the length of the mat. Maybe two or three rocks here. And then we'll meet in a tabletop position. And from your tabletop position, make sure your shoulders are stacked directly over your wrists. And we'll move right into our high plank. So stepping the right foot back and then the left pressing the ground away from you, still hugging the belly button in and up. We're just gonna take one breath here and then come on to the left forearm and then the right forearm. We'll just take one breath here. And at the bottom of your exhale, just let the belly come down to the mat. Untuck the toes, releasing the hips. We're in Sphinx pose. Focus on really pulling the elbows towards the ribs, relaxing the shoulders down the back. If you've got any low back tension, feel free to bring the feet out a little bit wider. And then from here, as you settle into your sphinx pose and find your breath, you might stretch out the neck a little bit, taking the right ear towards the right shoulder really relax that left shoulder down and then we'll come back through center take the left ear to the left shoulder really relax that right shoulder down one more time each side a couple breaths right ear to right shoulder and then back to the left a few breaths here left ear to left shoulder Awesome, and then come back through center and come all the way onto your belly, tenting the fingertips outside of the long edges of the mat, stacking your elbows directly over your wrists, really squeezing those shoulder blades in together, pressing into the tops of the feet, and on the inhale, lift up, baby cobra. Exhale, lower down. Twice more, maybe lifting a little bit higher each time. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, lower down. 
and place the left forearm parallel to the short edge of the mat, possibly resting your forehead on your left forearm. Kick that right heel in towards the seat and maybe grab your right foot with your right hand, stretching out the quad. One more breath here. Awesome, and then we'll move to the other side. Right forearm comes parallel to the top edge of the mat, kicking that left heel in towards the seat, resting the forehead on the forearm, maybe grabbing on to the left foot or the left ankle with the left hand. Feel the quad elongate. And as you're ready, you'll slowly come out of that, bringing your forearms back to parallel, making that 11 shape. This time, tucking the toes, pulling the belly button into the chest, pressing into the balls of the feet to lift the knees off the mat, and then engage all the muscles in your body to lift up to a forearm plank. Just take one breath here. And then the right hand plants, the left hand plants, we're taking one breath. And when you're ready, lift the hips. Downward facing dog. Find any movement that feels good. Reaching the heels towards the ground. Lifting the hips up to the sky. Really pressing into the fingertips. Taking the weight out of the wrists. We're gonna to start to move from an upward facing dog to a downward facing dog. So on your next inhale, take your gaze forward, start to move almost like you're moving through a plank and then drop the belly, drop the hips, let the chest come through the biceps. Take an inhale, back to downward facing dog. Move through those at your own speed if it feels good to stay in your upward facing dog, maybe rock the hips side to side. Maybe take your gaze over one shoulder and then the other. Maybe it feels good to take a couple breaths in your downward facing dog, pedaling out the knees. Wherever you are, find another round or two. We'll all meet back in our downward facing dog, settling into stillness. Find two deep breaths. When you're ready, take an inhale, lift the left leg up to the sky. One more inhale here. And on your exhale, curl that knee in towards the nose and step the left foot in between the hands for a low runner's lunge. Tenting the fingertips, maybe taking some rocks back and forth. And then from here, really firm up through the back leg, press the left heel into the mat to fire up that left glute. And maybe you start to hover your fingertips off the mat. So your chest is hovering off of your left thigh by just a couple inches. And then maybe from here, you sweep your arms back, finding airplane arms. One more breath here. Awesome, and then come all the way up to your crescent lunge, reaching the fingertips up to the sky. Two breaths here. And 
Beautiful, and then frame the left foot with the hands. Step the right foot in just a couple inches closer to the left and point the right toes to the top right corner of the mat. Straighten both of the legs and fold forward, finding a pyramid pose. Keeping a micro bend in the knees so you're not locking them out. Beautiful, one more breath here. And then start to bend back into the right knee. Take your left hand, left knee rather, take your left hand to the inside of the left foot and bring that right foot a little bit farther back and parallel to the back edge of the mat for your side angle pose. Start by taking the right fingertips directly up to the sky. And then if this feels good, you can take that right arm up and over the head. And maybe this is a little too much. You might bring your left forearm to your left thigh. Wherever you are, find two breaths. And then pull that belly button in and up. Use your core to bring you through a warrior two. And from your warrior two, flip the front palm, reverse your warrior, straight in your front leg. Really stretching out the side body here. And then as you're ready, start to bring the hands back through center, bringing both of the toes to face the long edge of the mat. And then shorten your stance slightly and find a goddess pose. So your knees are stacking right over your second or third toes. Your toes are facing out and your heels are facing in. From here, maybe you bring your arms to cactus. Take an inhale here, keep the arms in cactus, squeezing the shoulder blades together. And on your exhale, start to round forward, bringing the forearms together rounding the upper back and the neck. Stay here for a breath. Let's flow that breath to movement. Inhale, open up the arms to goal post. Exhale, round it forward, bring the forearms together. Two more times, inhale, open up. Exhale, bring it in. One more time, inhale, open up. Exhale, bring it in. Start to make your way back to your goddess pose, straightening through the legs this time. Widen out the feet just slightly and bring the hands down to the mat. And start to bend into the right knee, keeping that left leg straight, finding a side lunge. Beautiful, and then start to pivot towards the back of the mat. This time your right knee is over your right ankle. Go ahead and drop the back knee, untuck the toes, and stay here in your low lunge. Find a gentle twist, plant the left hand, reach the right fingertips up to the sky. And then when you're ready, plant that right hand outside of the right foot. Start to walk the hands back straight in the right leg, find a half split. With every inhale, lengthen the spine ever so slightly. With every exhale, fold a little bit deeper. Two breaths here. As you're ready, start to walk the hands forward, bend back into the right knee, and just step it right back to your downward facing dog. Come back to your breath, find stillness, 
Find steadiness and ease. And we'll take that to the other side. So take an inhale, lift the right leg up to the sky. One more inhale here, lift a little bit higher. And then start to curl that right knee in towards the nose. Eventually stepping the right foot in between the hands and come into your low runner's lunge. Maybe take some rocks back and forth. Eventually, you'll start to hover those fingertips just a couple inches off the mat. Make sure your chest is lifted off of your thigh, even if it's just by a couple inches. And maybe you start to bring your arms to airplane arms, really pressing into that right glute, right heel to fire up the right glute. Strong through the back leg. One more inhale here. And on your exhale, find your crescent lunge. Relax your shoulders, reach your fingertips up to the sky, and take two breaths. One more inhale here. And on your exhale, plant the hands to frame the right foot. Step the left foot in just a couple inches, point the left toes towards the top left corner of the mat and then start to straighten through both legs and fold over the front leg. Pyramid pose, pulling the right hip back and the left hip forward. One more breath here. As you're ready, start to bend back into that right knee, planting the right hand inside of the right foot, and then stepping that left foot back and pivoting the left foot so it's parallel to the front edge of the mat. And then inhale, lift the left fingertips up to the sky. You're in your extended side angle pose. Really press into the pinky edge side of the left foot. Maybe you take those left fingertips up and over the head. And if there's not a ton of space here, maybe you bring that right forearm to the right thigh. Wherever you are, breathe for two. For one. Beautiful, use your core to take you up to a warrior two. Just stopping for two breaths. The next time you inhale, flip your front palm, reverse your warrior straight in through the front leg, stretching out the side body. And then use your core, bring your hands back to center. Pivot both toes to face the long edge of the mat. This time make your stance a little bit wider. Heels face out, toes face in. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, puff up through the chest, take a deep breath in, and on your exhale, fold forward. The hands might stay down at your low back, they might start to reach up and over the head. Try and keep the heels of the hands touching. Two more breaths here. Find even more space. Let any heaviness go. One last breath. And then stay nice and low. Bring the hands down to the mat. Lift up the chest so it's parallel to the ground and start to bend into the left knee. Finding that side lunge. You'll feel this in your right inner thigh. Just a breath or two here. And we'll start to come back to the top of the mat, uh, bending into that left knee, pivoting towards the front of the mat. Drop the back knee, untuck the toes, 
stay here in your low lunge for a moment. Maybe you find a twist, planting the right hand, reaching the left fingertips up to the sky. And then plant that left hand outside of the left foot. Walk the hands back straight in the left leg and you're in your half split. Half split. Take an inhale, lift up halfway. And on your exhale, fold forward. One more full breath cycle here. And as you're ready, start to bend into the left knee, walk the hands forward, and just step right back to your downward facing dog. Let's take one cleansing breath together. Deep breath in through the nose. Exhale, sigh it out. Oh, that felt good. Let's do that again. Deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, sigh it out. As you're ready, drop the knees. Come on to either side left hip or right, and just bring your legs out in front of you. We're gonna come onto our backs. Just make sure you have your prop nearby, either a block or a stack of books. And if you don't have a block, you can just do a regular bridge. So we're gonna come into a restorative bridge. So plant the heels and the soles of the feet um, just enough, far enough away that you can graze them with your fingertips, they should be hips with distance apart. And then go ahead and press into the hands, lift the hips. If you don't have a block, you're welcome to stay here. If you do have a block or some other kind of prop, find the height that works for you. So the higher the block is, the more of a back bend this will be. We want this to be nice and relaxing. So if you're in bridge pose, you might come in and out of your bridge pose for a couple rounds, maybe eventually settling in Supta Baddha Konasana with the soles of the feet touching and the knees out wide. If you're in this restorative bridge with either your block or your books, just settle in here. Notice any feelings in the body, in the mind, and know that that's all they are, just feelings. They're temporary. They're not gonna last forever, whether they're good or they're bad. Just acknowledge that they're there and continue to breathe. For a little bit more openness in the upper body, you might take your hands over the head, maybe grabbing on to opposite elbows. Allow your breath to slow down here. Relax the muscles of the face. Relax the jaw.
If your arms are up and over your head or you're clasping the opposite elbows, start to bring them back down to your sides. Pressing into the feet and the hands, lifting the hips, and then taking that block, removing it out from underneath you. Just set it off to the side and let your upper back, your mid back, your low back all come back down to the mat. Option to cactus your arms here. Take your feet out wide, opposite edges of the mat, and then just start to windshield wiper the legs left and right. And the next time your legs fall off to the left side, you can go ahead and leave them there. Maybe you take your gaze out to the right. So our legs are pretty wide in this twist if it would feel better to take your right leg on top of your left. You can feel free to do that. Just another breath here. And switching the legs to the opposite side, taking the legs to the right and the gaze to the left. Again, if it would feel better to stack that left knee right on top of the right, feel free. Just one more breath. Gently make your way back to center, hugging both of the knees into the chest. Give yourself a nice big squeeze, hugging yourself into a tiny little ball. Maybe taking the head, neck, and shoulders off the mat and bringing the forehead to the knees. Take a deep breath in here. Feel the body fill up with tension. And on your exhale, let everything go. Find your Shavasana and just let that tension seep out of the body. Right back to where we began this class, settling in. You might feel a little bit different here than you did in the same position in the very beginning of class. It's just something we notice, not something we judge. You can stay in your Shavasana for as long as you'd like. If you have the time, try and take at least five minutes. Namaste.